Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to our talk show. My guest uh, today is uh, Mr. Bertus Vinskeitz, head of Lithuanian representative office here in Ramallah. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Mr. Talal. Thanks for having me. Marhaba, good morning. Good morning, and uh, Acho for, for being with, uh, with us. Uh, thank you for being with us again. Uh, we've been talking uh, just last week, actually, regarding the both sides relations and how we can evaluate this relation politically economically in all sides all fields there be many many activities since 2016 till today uh, trying to build better relationship between Lithuanians and Palestinians because I believe this is the final destination it's both sides I mean both people how they can be close to other to each other by having a better uh, cooperation maybe in education in economy in political side in many many issues uh, this is your fourth year in, 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 in Palestine and you are the third ambassador to your country uh, uh, here in Palestine uh, how you can just summarize your experience within the last almost four years especially in this complicated mission in our country yeah well it might take us uh, very long hours to uh, to speak about my four years here in palestine but uh, uh, i was trying to engage as much as possible with the palestinian people all over the palestine uh, as you rightly said it's uh, it's quite a complicated uh, place and especially in these uh, very difficult times but um, you know, we were trying to to work towards the better understanding between our two peoples. Uh, we were trying to build people-to-people uh, -to -people ties, business-to-business uh, -business ties, uh, to tell uh, to tell a story about Lithuania to the Palestinians and to open channels for Lithuanians to better understand Palestinian uh, narrative, Palestinian cause, Palestinian. Uh, situation uh, so over the past uh, four years uh, I'm almost four years here in, in, in Palestine so we had uh, we were up uh, there were ups and downs of course I arrived sure. during COVID uh, there was problematic to bring people from my country here to Palestine but uh, if I look back uh, we had very intense and uh, very intense and I'm I think very successful years, couple of years minimum, where we had delegations coming pretty much every month to, to Palestine, um, uh, to various cities. Uh, so we've been focusing on building these ties between, uh, between Lithuanian uh, uh, and Palestinian people. We had uh, high level visits, our prime minister was here, our foreign minister was here, our minister of economy was here, we had number of uh, deputy ministers, but we had also a lot of people from uh, from the sectors like IT, innovation, uh, environment, uh, coming uh, and engaging with the Palestinian counterparts, but and uh, of course uh, business people. I, for them, I was positively not surprised, but I was encouraged in in a way that the Finnish business community found Palestinian business community very uh, interesting and they want to engage in, into trying to look for the areas they can promote economic mm -hmm. cooperation. So many, many positives. I, I, I think we can, despite all the challenges we have, we can take uh, many positives out of uh, out of the past uh, few years. And I think we need to really uh, trying to keep the pace, uh, trying to keep the momentum and uh, to really continue to engage. And this, I think, lays the good foundation for better political, let's say, uh, um, cooperation between our two countries. So I will stop with that, I think. Well, actually, some of maybe some of our audience as well they believe or at least what they know that ambassador is a political uh, uh, kind of management you know 
so why you believe that some ambassadors, I mean from Europe or from other countries, working in all that fields, encouraging the economic ties, maybe the trade relation, in education as well, having more delegations, whatever, from Lithuania to Palestine or from Palestine to Lithuania. Do you believe that that this is your real real mission? Because what what would you know? What we know in Arab world in general, that it's it's uh, it's a political uh, stage that you have. You will you will you will live this stage as an ambassador, but you are not uh, uh, required maybe from your government. Uh, to move inside between the Chamber of Commerce, the municipalities, the Ministry of Education, uh, uh, whatever, maybe visiting the camps in Palestine and many, many, many issues. Why some uh, foreign ambassadors, you believe that they are doing this or you believe that this is their real mission mm -hmm. to move all together in all fields to build a powerful relationship between the two countries? Uh, thanks for this question, Talat. Um, I think my m my mission, uh, I can speak of course on behalf of myself, my mission is basically uh, is to connect people. It might sound uh, naively maybe, uh, very simpli in maybe simplistic uh, <laughs> way, but uh, really I try to do my best in order to to connect right people with the right people. And uh, as you rightly said, we had an area of uh, an, uh, an area of wide area of sectors where, can w where we can look into the potential our countries have. I mentioned several uh, innovation, right? Um, ICT, uh, uh, many sectors, many sectors, environmental, trade, uh, so Ex experiences experiences absolutely i mean cultural ties mm -hmm. right uh Palest palestinian culture is so unique we, uh, lithuanian culture is also very uh, we have very old and very unique uh, language we have very deep uh, traditions uh, even islamic traditions in lithuania we have islam in lithuania for over 600 years because our grand dukes at one uh, point in history they invited uh, tatars from uh, from crimea to to settle in lithuania and they built uh, beautiful wooden mosques so these type of um, these type of stories uh, they can really open uh, eyes uh, and they can open new um, uh, avenues for cooperation and they can uh, create some sort of curiosity that actually we are not so far away from each other it's just four hours flight i mean it's not uh, 14 hours flight it's uh, uh, i think uh, my job here is to try to unlock this mm -hmm. uh, unknown and to try to 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 show to the palestinians and lithuanians that guys this is the area uh, these are the people these are your potential partners and why don't we try to really uh, create some uh, positives and win-win uh, collaboration so basically i was trying to look uh, quite wide in the beginning mm, into many areas and then lately we were focusing uh, mainly on i would say three four main blocks we can really go deep deeper into and to to unlock the potential so mm -hmm. so i'm not saying that uh, we achieved uh, a breakthrough but Absolutely. i think we are on the right path because we have already uh, quite solid uh, connections and partnerships built between Lithuanian uh, associations, it, 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 business communities. It takes, community. it takes time. Usually. It takes time, and it's, uh, uh, but now I'm very happy that that uh, they don't m need me as a person or as a representative to try to to somehow to manage this relation or to to do it uh, artificially you know these are already genuine and very uh, friendly ties we've managed to create between some palestinian uh, organizations associations and uh, lithuanian ones so you know my job is uh, i i was sent here and i believe uh, all of my colleagues who work in other missions all over the world 
uh, our mission is to connect people and to look for these uh, win-win uh, collaborations. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I cannot focus on one specific area, uh, as you, you rightly said, of course, it's a political position, but uh, we have so many, so many areas we can try to build positive, uh, positive relations. So uh, I am not uh, limiting myself and I think it would be super unwise, you know, to limit myself and to observe the, 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 the situation. So if I have an opportunity, I, I always try to engage and to look for the mm -hmm. for the possibilities. You told me before that uh, you visited many, many places in Palestine, yeah. especially maybe Chamber of Commerce yeah. in uh, Hebron. And then I will I would like to listen or yeah. to hear from you about your experience in your first visit yeah. in Hebron. Yeah. Uh, just to, 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 to break the rules a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and how people in Palestine received your message? Uh -huh. Because, you know, they, they, we are always uh, working or uh, active with, with non-countries, uh, whatever, in, in UK, in uh, Turkey, China, whatever. So as, a, as an ambassador of a country just started here, her just in 2016, how they received you, your your message and let me start with your first visit in, in Hebron and then what is what's happened yeah. in, in in the Chamber of Commerce uh, yeah thank you for this question well um, uh, as we spoke uh, last week um, it's a bit pity I did not start to write my diary you know here <laughs> there were so many uh, so many unique we, we are doing that actually, yeah we are doing yeah, yeah. that now yes but on, but yes, on air, but yes, on air. <laughs> yes but on air but uh, yeah, I can recall my first trip to Hebron. Uh, it was few months after uh, I arrived here and it was still COVID and I went to Hebron and it was suddenly the traffic jam. I was, uh, I found myself in huge traffic jam in the middle of the city. It was, I think, 11 a.m. And then I saw people uh, honking, driving uh, like, um, the, you know, uh, crazy celebrating, shooting fireworks. And uh, there was a... Uh, a big, big, uh, uh, big festivity in the city and I had no idea what is going on. Uh, so I was stuck in with my wife uh, for maybe one hour in the in the middle of Khalil. And then I called a colleague of mine who was um, who was actually waiting for me and he said it's Taujiki. <laughs> the, the results were announced and this was my first interaction with this tradition, the uh, Taujiki. Uh, it's tradition. your first time in, in your life. Actually. Yes, uh, and I had no idea uh, that mm. this is the day when the uh, results will be announced. I had no idea what what is Taujiki about. And then I, uh, I found myself in the middle of Taujiki. So this is just one experience, you know. Um, uh, and then uh, you mentioned the Chamber of Commerce. You, you continue, of course. You didn't get back. Yeah, no, no, no. Of course, I continued. And then uh, we actually, I went to the Chamber of Commerce, meet my uh, partners there. And it was my first uh, first trip to Hebron, to Chamber of Commerce. But one of 100 trips, I think, uh, because Hebron, uh, uh, I became a frequent visitor here. And if we have friends from Hebron uh, listening to us, best regards to them, stay strong. Uh, fantastic people and uh, yeah, we've been uh, with the vibrant very vibrant he Hebronite business community we were trying to promote uh, they uh, are hard workers yes yeah. and we were trying to promote <coughs> business collaboration between Lithuanian and Palestinian business community but mm -hmm. in Hebron we had the Lithuanian business delegation oh, 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 oh. Uh, we had uh, we, we managed to bring uh, mm -hmm. some Lithuanian a businessman to Hebron, uh, uh, colleagues from Hebron, uh, uh, business community were in Lithuania on business mission. So, and we signed some agreements between Hebron Chamber of Commerce and Lithuanian Chamber of Commerce. In specific fields? Or, uh, uh, it was chamber to chamber uh, uh, agreement, mm. but you know, Hebron Chamber of Commerce is, is, is very strong and very big. Uh, and we managed to uh, to build partnerships and uh, found the partners for them in Lithuania. So, so I you, be, you believe that? I, by the way, I was attending um, big shows: uh, Hebron Food Expo, Hebron Beauty Expo, Hebron uh, Construction uh, Expo, and uh, really, I was lucky um, to 
meet a lot of people but um, and uh, everywhere I went I was uh, uh, welcome to the open hearts and uh, and uh, I received uh, uh, just love support and uh, good intentions and we've been working together I mean it's not um, it's I always say it takes two to tango so you know there is a saying you sure. cannot do on yeah. your own Absolutely. so in Hebron uh, in Hebron we we I, I Lithuania had very uh, ha, had found very strong uh, partners and uh, and really friends and just uh, just to recall another episode from my one of the first visits to Hebron because I was going there then uh, every second week I think I was in Hebron oh, really? yeah yeah ah. so, so you, I was you, you love the city I love the city I love the people I love the mm, the unique character of Hebronites and uh, I at some point I felt I'm partially local there you know but uh, but uh, you know i mentioned islam mm. I, I i mentioned uh, uh, these um, this heritage we have in lithuania and i recall one of the first visits i i was engaging with um, with, uh, with 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 hebronites and it was full auditorium full hall of people and then of course i was trying to say about lithuania what where we are strong where you know our advantages maybe as a country mm -hmm. in uh, i was speaking about digital um, services about innovation about uh, life sciences but then i mentioned that we will there will be ramadan in lithuania as well in, uh -huh. in a week mm -hmm. because we have muslim community so yeah, well, well, and it I, opened their eyes I, I will talk about yes. maybe we'll uh, we'll we'll make it in the yeah. last of our uh, interview to talk a lot about the yeah. the, the, the the community and the yeah. history of Lith lithuania do you believe that there is any potential for now even with this circumstances this exceptional circumstances whatever the start from hebron or from uh, nablus or from another another city do you believe that this kind of efforts by gathering people connecting people chamber to chamber people to people business to business whatever that can break the ice <coughs> between the two countries and starting real cooperation uh, i i really do because the if you don't believe it in it it uh, doesn't make any sense to 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 try to uh, to to push for this type of cooperation as we speak i know there are some uh, already contracts signed between lithuanian and palestinian business communities so there is mm -hmm. there is a concrete uh, concrete uh, let's say cooperation which is taking place very concrete i don't want to go into details now uh, but uh, you know i, I mentioned uh, we had many many visits from lithuanian experts uh, to from palestine. to palestine and especially focusing uh, the experts our experts lithuanian experts they were focusing on on trying to uh, to work with, together with palestinian uh, it community let's say from both uh, public and private sector mm -hmm. in order to to share our experience and our lessons learned and maybe our knowledge uh, on how to make some of the services digital how to make uh, uh, some of the services more efficient and more down to the people so you know despite all the challenges this uh, this type of uh, cooperation uh, is taking place and it's continuing and uh, we have plans to bring uh, another group of Lithuanian colleagues who and it will be their fourth fifth sixth visit to Palestine uh, already next month so we are continuing our uh, even with even with, the, with the, exactly with the even with mm -hmm. this situation of course it is hard to to predict what will happen uh, you know in the in the, in the, in the coming uh, weeks and months but uh, we are trying to stick to our plans because I think uh, it is very important to be consistent in what on top of what you know uh, what we are doing we, we need to try to be consistent and focused and being focused i think this is the the key for success so we managed to build this type of uh, strong friendship and co collaboration between our two uh, peoples and associations in certain areas and we, we will do our best in order to 
uh, foster this uh, cooperation and despite all the challenges to 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 go towards together to these um, uh, tangible results we set bet between uh, be be in front of us so the work is uh, going on despite all the challenges so we spoke about the b2b business to yeah. business. what about g2g government to government what according to your experience yeah. what should be done you believe for better well, relationship between the two countries uh, as a, as a, as a, as i mentioned to you we had a number of visits uh, from Lithuania high level officials were visiting palestine and we are happy uh, about it and uh, i think it was a good uh, good experience uh, of direct interaction with uh, between Lithuanian and Palestinian officials uh, the dialogue is uh, continuing um, but uh, you know there is always room for improvement and uh, uh, we will do I am here uh, in, in Palestine I'll do my best to to continue uh, promote uh, to continue promoting uh, you know political dialogue and uh, you know we have concrete plans uh, and concrete schedule how we how we mm, you know uh, develop our political uh, dialogue political relations uh, you know there's election year now in Lithuania we have we in the middle of elections so um, also it, it has some nuances because you know the our domestic political sure. scene is 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 is, is quite um, intense but uh, but the dialogue is continue but uh dialogue uh, political dialogue is very important but i i must say and from my own experience here uh, people to people dialogue and you know uh grassroots mm -hmm. uh initiatives are also very important and they help to develop political understanding and yeah, even, political even cooperation. If we, if we, even if we as a Palestinians, we don't have a Palestinian representative office in Lithuania. Well, it's, you don't believe I, I, uh, It's up to Palestinian. Yeah. It's, it's up to, it's not, uh, I cannot comment on that, but it's up to Palestinian uh, government to make these uh, type of decisions. But I'm very happy Lithuania has a the diplomatic uh, office here the only baltic state the only baltic state, the only yeah. baltic state we are here officially since 2016 on the ground i am the third Lithuanian representative in, in in palestine and we do we do our best in order to um uh, to promote ties between our two countries and our two peoples and it's always you know uh, I always take it as a big uh, gratitude uh, that I can work and engage and to try to do my best in order to promote ties between our two people. So we are new, we are, we are not big mission here, but we are here and I think it's a big asset in order to not big vision but big efforts uh, big heart we try to do everything with uh, with uh, with big heart and with openness and frankness and uh, to really um, uh, look and we are looking for the opportunities all the time where we can find these specific niches which can be uh, of benefit for both for Lithuanians and for Palestinians. And this is, I think, the most important thing. So now it's time actually to, to take our audience to, to Lithuania. Yeah, uh, with pleasure. I will start with, uh, 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 your country was named the, happy, the happiest place in the world for people under 30. Yeah. Uh, I'm not shocked about that actually, because, but I, 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 l l let me talk about with you frankly, that there is many, many issues I, I read about Lithuania that was shocked for me actually because we don't know a, a lot about Lithuania especially in this survey in 2024 yeah that it's the, the best place for people to live there under 30 why and how and maybe how before why you get that rank and you get that survey all over the world not in Europe yes thank you for the question and it's not an easy uh, question and uh, to be very frank with you m myself i was 
surprised. I was uh, quite shocked in a way because um, we in Lithuanians have uh, have a saying that we have uh, two national sports. Yeah, mm -hmm. one national sport number one is basketball, and the second uh, one is uh, complaining. Right? <laughs> so uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit strange, uh, but um, I think the, uh, it has to do um, uh, the, these results, these positive results. I think we ourselves need to understand. Uh, I, I, it's my personal take, but Lithuanian society, we need to 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 try to understand why it happened because mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Okay, we have uh, official criteria uh, why the combination of uh, GDP per capita, social support, a healthy uh, life expectancy, freedom, uh, generosity, and and uh, lack of corruption. These were the main components, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, the combination of these components uh, led to this um, uh, to this result, but. My personal feeling is that it has to do with the new generation because now in Lithuania we have a generation already which were born in the EU, in the European Union. We joined EU mm -hmm. in 2004 and now we are in 2024. And I believe this, these people, this young generation, you can call it uh, Z generation. I'm a bit older, so for me, it's uh, quite, it's not so easy to understand them. But uh, what I was reading uh, and what I am feeling more and more in mm. Lithuania than I visit, it's I think this work and life balance, which makes people happy. So the financial situation uh, the financial uh, the, the economic uh, mm -hmm. the economic of, uh, figures and the quality of life they are important of course as well maybe the, the digital life the digital life yes but i i believe that work and life balance mm -hmm. it's also very important for this young generation and in in lithuania we have hard working people but we also have a, a, an opportunity to get access to the to the services digitally. All digitalized. Uh, 95, All services. Pretty much Almost. everything. Mm -hmm. Ninety-five percent of services are digital. We have very uh, healthy and very mm, uh, very green environment. We have a lot of forest. We have a lot of lakes uh, people can go uh, from the capital city in 15 20 minutes they can go on hike they can go on bike they can go you know to refresh themselves it's it's i think they 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 don't feel uh, under stress and i'm not saying that you know they are completely <laughs> uh, of the stress but the combination of all these factors uh, made this striking result and uh, for myself it's still I think we are still digesting what have happened mm -hmm. but positively paradoxically positively uh, we have this new generation uh, after so many years of dark decades of Soviet occupation yeah. after very uh, difficult uh, first decade of our independence where we had to be very um, focused on reforms on 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 transition of our economy from you built the, your own uh, life yes we, we, we and and then i think now we have the results of this policy we had uh, over the past uh, 34 years since we became independent country again uh, after 20 years in eu European Union and NATO, where the young generation, the, the, the generation of freedom, they can travel all, all over the world, they can mm -hmm. have the best services possible, the, you know, uh, and, and then I think this is the combination of, uh, of many factors which, which made them uh, the most 
the, the happiest uh, country uh, or happiest generation in, in the world under the age of 30. Uh, we have to we have to cherish this we have it it did not take for uh, we cannot take it for granted we Absolutely. need to completely stay focused on our main priorities as a country of you know being resilient uh, be, be, being uh, resilient building more building more uh, uh, more services online uh, more innovation you, 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 you never feel satisfied and we never feel satisfied because the world is very complicated and we have new technologies just you know artificial intelligence for me for instance is a is a uh, I, we need to keep learning all the time and uh, you know the, uh, the the innovation is move uh, is moving very fast you know you have processes where you have to always be uh, in the if you want to develop as a country as a nation you have to be you cannot stay in the comfort zone because it is super important to be connected to the world and where the world is heading and to be part of this uh, and to be to be part of innovation to be part of the le you know be leading technology to be part of keep, avant-garde keep moving so this is this is i think uh, the, 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 the the this is the momentum we have in lithuania now we, we want to uh, do more we want to be better we have we want to be uh, you know con constantly prove our uh, country and our society and i think this is what motivates uh, motivates uh, even me here in yeah. uh, trying to i try i can feel that yeah actually. thank you thank you yeah <laughs> let me finish with the islamic traditions yes. in lithuania yeah. tell me more about that yes so um yeah roughly 600 years ago uh, grand dukes of lithuania uh, Grand Duchy of Lithuania at the time was the biggest country in Europe, about one million square kilometers. Uh, they invited Tatars from Crimea as the very good soldiers to come back, uh, to come to Lithuania mm -hmm. and uh, uh, to take land and to to become uh, an integral part of our uh, society. And uh, you know they stayed for 600 years and we have a very small but very old uh, tatar community in lithuania which is they're still there uh, they are still there uh, uh, around three thousand people maybe a bit less very well integrated muslims uh, muslims sunni muslims and uh, we have four mosques actually four mosques uh, in lithuania and all of them uh, three of them are uh, wooden I, mosques I, I read there have been more than 25 mosques in the past yes yeah. but uh, during uh, soviet occupation mm. some of them were demolished uh, we are trying now to rebuild some of the uh, heritage we have muslim heritage uh, two years ago we celebrated uh, lithuanian tatar uh, the the year of lithuanian tatar history of culture there were many events taking place uh, all around Lithuania and I was here in Palestine also organizing several exhibitions mm -hmm. about Islam in Lithuania. Uh, so, and we had then exhibitions in uh, several cities in Palestine, in, in Ramallah, in, uh, we had an exhibition in Bethlehem, we had an exhibition in, uh, in Hebron. Uh, so this is very deep tradition we cherish. And just one example, for instance, the first mosque in the United States was built by Lithuanian Tatars uh -huh. in New York, uh, Williamsburg. And we have a uh, very famous people of, uh, of Lithuanian and Tatarian descent. So I think uh, this tradition, which is very uncommon for our part of Europe, Okay, we have Muslim communities all over Europe, of course, but uh, but uh, Muslims in Lithuania they live for centuries. So this is part of our society and part of our tradition uh, of coexistence. Grand Duchy of Lithuania, which uh, later was joined uh, Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth, uh, was the place and still is the place in Europe where different religions different cultures different uh, denominations of muslims christians uh, uh, coexist peacefully so we cherish this tradition 
and uh, we built uh, we can build a lot of of this culture of coexistence between uh, religious religions uh, cultures and different ethnic groups within mm. one state so um, so yeah i think uh, it helped me the the, the the, the, the narrative, uh, the, the story about Islam in Lithuania and about Tatars in Lithuania uh, opened uh, me an opportunity to get uh, better outreach here in Palestine, sure. as I mentioned, uh, exhibitions, documentaries, and uh, these type of stories unlocks the unknown. And as I mentioned before, it shows maybe that we are not that far away from each sure. other that the, we there think is, we are. The, 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 there is a ties, and you exactly. can you can build exactly, and you can move in, the, in this in yeah. this uh, on this stage. Finally, your message to Palestinians, especially in this exceptional circumstances in Palestine. Well, my message is uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank all Palestinians for. For all the love and support I receive here in Palestine, and the message is to to stay uh, united uh, as much as possible. This is my main message to the Palestinian thank people. Thank you for your message, and thank you for being with us. And uh, I hope before you leave that we can have another uh, interview once we uh, once we know that uh, you're gonna leave Palestine. Of course, to continue serving your country and maybe in different mission or you get back to your country again Bertas uh, Vince Guides the uh, uh, representative head of, head of the uh, Lithuanian representative of Ramallah I thank you very much for being with us and uh, I wish you all the best for your country and your people I hope uh, by yourself and by your colleagues they will know more about Palestinians and they will support Palestinians uh, more and more and I hope your efforts, your trying to connect uh, Palestinian people to Lithuania, will will have results that we can we can see and we can touch in the coming future. Hopefully, thank you for uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been great uh, honor and pleasure to be on your show, and I'm very much looking forward for our future engagements. And I wish everybody. <laughs> to stay safe and to stay strong and and uh, let's continue uh, and build our uh, ties between our two peoples uh, thank this you is very important thank shukran you for, shukran shukran thank you for kind, uh, kind words ashkur bismukum jami'an taba'an dayfi safir lithuania fi filastin bertas wali taba'an tahadathna bi ijaz ana bahawil awjiz ba'd al-qadai illa hakiyana fiha هو طبعا موجود معنا من حوالي اربع سنوات ويمكن الملف الاول اللي فتحته مع دور السفراء وهذا اللي بنطمح دائما نشوفه ومسؤولياتهم الاقتصاديه والاجتماعيه في بناء اواصل العلاقات بين هاي الدول وتمثيل مصالح بلدهم خير تمثيل فيرتاس بالمناسبه اجى عندي هاي المره الثانيه فيرتاس بسيارته بمركبته لوحده بصف لحاله بينزل لحاله بيستخدم مصاد لحاله بيوصل لهون لحاله بيحمل مكتبه معاه معاه شنطه مكتبه معاه بتنقل من دائره لدائره من الرئاسه للحكومه للمؤسسات وبقول لي هاي سفارتي معي يعني هو سفارته حاملها بايده بدون مرافق بدون تنسيق مسبق بدون جماليات بدون برستيج كما يقال وأنا بشكره طبعا على هاي الروح العالية وبحدثني عن تجربته في زيارته الأولى للخليل يوم نتائج التوجيه وتفاجأ بأثناء وجوده في منتصف الخليل بأنه في هناك إطلاق نار كثيف جدا ومسيرات وإلى آخره فتفاجأ بحكي لهم شو في يا جماعة الخير أنا سفير شو مالكو قالوا له وسلامتك هي مجرد نتائج التوجيه فكانت صدمة الأولى في الخليل <تصفيق> طبعا كما حال كل المدن الفلسطينية حديثنا مع السفير طبعا تطرقنا فيه لعدة قضايا وهو بمثل دولة البطيق الوحيدة في فلسطين لثوانيا طبعا بكل تأكيد بدأت مهمتها الدبلوماسية في 2016 كبلد عاش مراحل احتلال سوفيتي وليس لديهم موارد طبيعية وعانوا من اللجوء وعانوا من النزوح وهذا بجوز بيخليهم أقرب إلنا نسبيا ومع ذلك هي اليوم تصنف كأفضل دولة في العالم 
للجيل ما دون 30 عام أفضل دولة في العالم لأسباب طبعا عديدة منها التعليم وانخفاض الإيجار والمجالات الإبداعية و95% من البلد ديجيتال كل الخدمات ديجيتاليزد بطريقة بمعنى خدمات مرقمنة بطريقة يعني جذابة للعيش وجذابة للرفاهية في بلدهم طبعا اللي نتمنى له الخير 3 مليون مواطن تقريبا منهم حوالي 3000 مسلم وتحدثنا طبعا عن الثقافة والحضارة الإسلامية العريقة والكبيرة في لثوانيا واللي هي طبعا انضمت للاتحاد الأوروبي منذ العام 2004 أشكركم مرة أخرى على وجودكم معنا اليوم ونلتقي في لقاء آخر من برنامج حديث الرقيب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته